It's really kind of wonderful to be in a city that feels like it's coming alive instead of like past its peak. And then literally just walking around and, and just in Mabonang and just seeing the construction, you know, the cafes and the bars and the restaurants pop up and everybody moving in instead of dissipating. It's really inspiring. 2015 seems to be Johannesburg's year. I mean, we in the media everywhere, and especially in the inner city, it's on the rough guards, top list to visit in the world for cities. It's in Travel and Leisure magazine, one of the top ones. The world's media has discovered um, South Africa and Johannesburg especially. This is the one city where you'll find people of all walks of life, all races, all income groups, all backgrounds, living, working, playing. And my guess is that's why so many locals are moving to town to come and live in town. That's why so many travelers are coming here too. It's two weeks before the second annual Joburg City Festival and we're in Ferreira Sound where author and tour guide Gerald Garner is about to show us an exciting development which will bring a new lease of life to this historic corner of the inner city. Okay, so we at 1 Fox Street in Joburg City in the western edge of town. Um, behind us is a very exciting project called The Sheds at One Fox. Um, it's a new artisanal food and produce market we're opening in town. Um, yeah, so let's go have a look. This is the area where Joburg's first miners pitched their tent during the gold rush. And these old industrial warehouses are possibly the oldest industrial structures in Joburg city. Some of them dating back to the 1890s. As a passionate Joburger, Gerald immediately saw the potential in developing these warehouses into a lifestyle market. All right, so we're standing in the main shed or warehouse. And this is indeed a historic part. You can see it's, um, timber trusses and posts. And the entrance is from there. You walk into this arcade space. It reminds me of a cathedral. And then you have the market actually between the pillars here running um, up and you turn and walk around the other side of the pillar. So we're actually building market stalls with those pallet walls that you're seeing standing around, you know, little cubicles actually. So the idea is there's a lot of space, you can bring your family here, you can find yourself a table, you can buy some stuff, you can eat some stuff, you can have a lovely um, day at the Sheds at One Fox. Gerald is one of the city's biggest ambassadors and he shares his immense love and wealth of knowledge of the city through his guidebooks and walking tours. Today, he is giving a few clients a taste of what the inner city has to offer as part of his marketing drive for the upcoming Johannesburg City Festival. All right, so we're standing in front of the baseline in Newtown. People have this perception, a lot of people have this perception that town is a place to be avoided. And yet the city of Johannesburg, the inner city, offers so much for people. We want to tell people that they do not have to spend all their money on flying to New York or London or Paris. They can actually come to town and they can use public transport, the Raya Via system, to get around and have a wonderful, relaxed experience and actually see great heritage sites, great museums and fantastic performances. Newtown was one of the first inner city regeneration projects which commenced nearly 15 years ago. Well, surprisingly so, Newtown is a very old name. <laughs> Newtown was given this name in about 1904, when Johannesburg was still a very young little city. And this area was originally called Brickfields. This is where the uh, first brick clay you know, factory or manufacturing place was for the city. And this was originally the Black Township of Johannesburg. You know, apart that it didn't exist as such, but there was lots of racial discrimination anyway, and the city was quite segregated. So this was mostly a squatter camp. And after the Anglo-Boer War, when this became the Transvaal colony, Lord Milner, who was the governor of the colony, actually decreed that the entire brick fields be burnt down and everyone be moved out under the auspices or the excuse of it is actually unhygienic, the sanitary conditions are bad. So everybody was forcefully evicted from brick Brickfields and there was the first racially motivated force removals in our country's history actually. So yes, behind us is Museum Africa and the Market Theatre and behind the Market Theatre 
Newton Junction is opening. And it's a great addition to the city with a beautiful outdoor square, greenery and trees, outdoor restaurants, and just shows you how fast the city is now turning. And I think it's a very good example of the regeneration philosophy of the city working. They started off by investing in public space, hoping the private sector will follow in the surrounding buildings. It took a long time here, you know, they renovated Mary Fitzgerald Square more than decades ago, and only now do we see a big private um, investor developing this. One of Gerald's favorite attractions in the city is the sculpture of NC stalwarts Walter and Albertina Sisu. The reason the sculpture stands here is that Walter Sisulu had his office in one of the buildings that used to stand here in 1952. And of course, Nelson Mandela and our Tamba's office was just around the corner. It tells us two things about them. First of all, it tells us about their love story. They were married for 59 years, which is a very long time. They were separated by imprisonment for 26 years because Walter Sisulu was in the Robben Island with Nelson Mandela. Yet their marriage survived all of that. So they're sitting down, they're looking into each other's eyes. It's a loving pose. But what the sculpture really is about is the fact that it says here they became parents to the nation. And of course, the story is that this couple had incredible love of children and played such a big role in the lives of many children. And the sculpture actually resembles the love of children in two ways. First of all, they have exaggerated scale. So we are all the proportion of a child to parents. And secondly, the artist designed it to be interactive. She hoped that what would happen is people would walk by here and actually come here and sit on their laps and feel like a child. And what I love about it is I walk past here very often and there are often children playing here or there are people sitting here being photographed. And there's not a single sign that tells you that you should do it. People do it automatically. And I think that makes it a really successful piece of public art. Johannesburg has an incredible story with a very complex and rich history. The city was born out of hope and prospect with the discovery of gold in 1884. Sadly, along her journey, the city has become known for urban decline, derelict buildings and decay during the late 1980s and through to the early 2000s. However, in the last decade, Joburg has seen a steady reinvention and today, town is firmly on the way up a destination on international travelers must visit list. Gerald is telling the city's good story and it is difficult not to be infected by his enthusiasm and passion for the city. The freedom of the city, the fact that you can walk around, you can eat the street side cafes, you can have a great time and you can just enjoy your city. You are not bound to a motor car, which the city, the inner city of Joburg offers. And I mean, this is a great example. This is Main Street Mall. It runs all the way up to Gandhi Square with pedestrianized spaces, beautiful places, Woolies food, coffee shops and restaurants all along. And I mean, you can walk this way all the way back to One Fox and then to Newtown as well. You don't even need a bus, that is the irony. How many people in Johannesburg walk around here? Well, hundreds, thousands, but these are the people living and working in the city. There are probably over a million people in Johannesburg who's never been to this part of the city, and yet it's the loveliest part of town by far. Johannesburg is finally unshackling itself from its troubled reputation and is fast emerging from its somber past with a buzz of creative energy. Perhaps it's the story of one of Johannesburg's most iconic sculptures that best captures the rebirth of the city. This sculpture was given as a gift to Johannesburg, to the city, in 1960 by Harry Oppenheimer, the son of Ernest Oppenheimer, who started this as a family business originally. The sculpture didn't stand here, though. It stood in Ernest Oppenheimer Park, which is that small little park behind the Rissing Street Post Office, you know, close to the Pritchard Street, close to the Fashion District. In the 1990s, by then, Joburg was really unsafe. A lot of vagrants lived in that park. One evening, the vagrants attacked the Impala. They decapitated them, cut off their heads to sell it as scrap metal. And so this beautiful sculpture was destroyed. The photograph of that destroyed sculpture is still traveling the world today. And people, travelers who Google enough, see that and think that is what you can do. And they, you know, and they don't know what's happened, because look where we are. 
So, in 2002, Anglo-American and the JDA, the city council, actually pedestrianised um, Main Street. This is Main Street, and this used to be a street for cars. They then beautified it, and they contacted the Opera the family, who had the remnants of the sculpture, and asked them if they could bring it back to town. And the Opera Nama said they would love to see the sculpture in the city. The problem was that most of the heads were missing, and the original sculptor Herman Wald was no longer alive. So how do you refurbish the sculpture? Luckily, his son Michael is also a very talented sculptor, and he had enough photographs of the original in order to make new heads. And I also always say, if this Impala could talk, they could tell you so much about Job. It's his glory days, his decline and downfall, and his rebirth. New clusters of progressive museums, galleries and shops are fast emerging in the city. But one of the older attractions that should be on top of the to-do list for visitors is Chancellor House. So one of the incredible stories of Johannesburg is how Mahatma Gandhi opened the law practice opposite the court, which is where Gandhi Square now is today. And six decades later, in 1952, there were two other young men who had recently moved to Johannesburg, while well, they were here for quite a few years already, and who decided to open their own law practice. And their names were Nasa Mandela and Oliver Tambo. The sculpture here of the shadow box is a sculpture of Nasa Mandela, which looks best if you stand a bit further away, but it's actually based on this photograph, which is behind us there. That photograph was taken by Bob Kozani on one of the rooftops nearby the offices. Of course, after work every afternoon, Nelson Mandela did shadow boxing on the rooftop. And he wrote that boxing was his favorite sport and that he would have wanted to be a boxer if he didn't become a politician. Last time I was in the city uh, and looked at it like I did now, it was probably about 10 years ago. And oh, it looks like it's been, had 100 years worth of uh, development. So well done to the guys. Um, I'm keen to bring family, friends through to see what I've just experienced. Johannesburg is the heartbeat of Africa and really it's got so much history and it's constantly changing. I think the rest of the world has a really warped perception of the city and you know the story about its change should definitely be told. The second annual Johannesburg City Festival kicks off with the eagerly anticipated opening of the Sheds at One Fox. It's a buzz of excitement as visitors enthusiastically try out the amazing food, drink and wine on offer at Joburg's newest trendy food and lifestyle market. Bon appetit. We're very excited about the venue. We think it's a great thing for downtown Johannesburg and I think it's going to be a great draw for this region and revitalization. I used to live in, in uh, Cape Town and I moved here about four months ago. But it's awesome, you know, it's got this vibrant beat, you know, this energy. Like when I'm in Newtown, it's like this young, beautiful, creative energy. You know, it's like I'm, sound, I'm surrounded by people that, um, that are out to get these crazy ideas like my stuff, you know, out and to give it life and to, yeah, you know, I love that. You know, it's, it's a really, it's awesome. The Johannesburg City Festival received a major boost when one of the country's biggest banks came on board as a headline sponsor, ensuring that this year's festival is bigger and better than the inaugural festival. The Times of London described Johannesburg City as the latest hip city break with a vibrant urban energy. And this is no more evident than at the Maboneng Precinct. The Maboneng Precinct was one of the first and most ambitious and successful inner city rejuvenation projects. Among the young entrepreneurs plying their trade in Maboneng is Begi Dube. Begi is a successful tour operator in the area and has recently opened a backpackers lodge called Curio City Backpackers. Yeah, so it's, a, it's become a landmark for travelers. Joburg has always been my passion, you know. I grew up skateboarding, photographing in the city. Actually, that's how I got to understand the inner workings of the city. When I was still studying photography at the Market Photo Workshop, I was managing a cinema house in Maboneng, which it just started to become the new vibrant neighborhood. In 2012, I was traveling around South Africa, documenting portraits at different hostels, and that became the catalyst. It wasn't the first time I thought of a backpackers, but that became the catalyst in me coming back 
and wanting to open up this backpack is. Just by being here in Mabo Neng, what was happening is people were starting to come into the inner city, but also interested in exploring the vast of Johannesburg. So what Mabo Neng has done is it's provided a platform for people from all walks of life to feel safe, to feel comfort. What it's also done, it's become a platform for people to engage with Vasta Johannesburg. So we started doing walking tours. I've been very lucky that I've been able to, to really intermix both things I enjoy, passion really, and work, and be able to create a sustainable model out of that, you know? And I think what excites me really about Joburg is, is you have to thrive to make your mark, you know? And it's, it keeps pushing the individual to reach their greatest potential. I'm very much interested in cities, you know. I think cities are such blank canvases and also just very much in Africa as a whole. And for the future, I think plans of curiosities to have at least 30 curiosities looking at African cities and creating trails, be it you land in Joburg, next thing you're in Zimbabwe, you're in Mozambique, and just exploring cities within the African continent, but also I think finding youth in those cities to, to run these curiosities, to run these tours and tell their own stories of their communities, you know. Like for me, it's been telling my story of Johannesburg because I grew up here, you know. And I think with, with the other ventures, it's also finding uh, enlightened, really, individuals who are passionate about their cities and, and collaborating with them. The precinct was once, like the rest of the inner city, a no-go area. Today, Mabuneng has been transformed into one of Johannesburg's most exciting cultural hubs. I own this track, it's called Cocobal Desserts. Um, it's an old track that I converted into a shop. So it's um, old, recycled, just the whole recycling thing. I've been coming here since Arts and Main opened, which is about five or six years ago. Um, so this used to be my hangout spot and I just absolutely love it. I love the people that come here. I love the, just the different, like just different people that come, the different looks, the, like the different, uh, there's art, there's just everything, like it's very diverse. A new era of change is certainly sweeping across the Johannesburg inner city. It's a city reborn, and with its incredible pulse, people, and places, it is fast becoming a microcosm of a new emerging South African society. People of all walks of life, all income groups, and all races mingle and share public space as they live, work, and play in this astonishingly dynamic and exciting place. Zahira Asmal's company, Designing South Africa, is involved in one of the newest rejuvenation projects in the city, a public pavilion at Park Station, which is Johannesburg's central station and the biggest transport node in Africa. So what appeals to Zahira about working in Johannesburg? You know, I think people come to Joburg, I mean, think about it, Johannesburg's about 150 years old. So, you know, who is an immigrant? in Joburg, you know, who is a foreigner and who is a local. We all either move in a transit space or and in, in that time period, we're all migrants, if you think about it, in this short time, period of time. So it, us being migrants, all of us have an opportunity to engage with the city and make it what it could be. And, and so, and this is why I engage with the city the way I do and not wait for a brief from government or wait for any brief from anybody is because it is a blank canvas at the moment and it is erratic, it's impulsive, it's, 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 it's intense and exciting and it is what we make of it. And what I also like about it is that Johannesburg's not shy. You know, it's not shy to throw its weight around and it's not shy to debate issues. Um, I've been to debates even with the mayor and yeah. people say things to him and around him and with him and, and people are not shy. And I, I, I can't find a city in South Africa that does the same and where you can stand up and say, well, this is how I feel and have people respond in the same way. I find it exciting. The new year starts off with a bang for Gerald and the Sheds at One Fox, as American rock star Amanda Palmer is making a surprise visit to Johannesburg and offers to perform a free concert at the Sheds. We actually cannot believe it, but Amanda Palmer is in town. She came for a last, um, no, Kickstarter house party, which was in, in Pretoria in South Africa, and we heard that she's around and we sort of 
tweeted and we know she loves social media and said we would like to host her for one of her famous free ninja gigs in um, town at the Sheds of One Fox and she responded and accepted. So we're really excited about the fact that this is a relatively new property, no market and a music venue in town and we have one of the world's most regarded musicians, singers, authors actually with us here tonight. I was in Australia on my way back to the States had been putting off and putting off and trying to find a good time to do the South Africa party. Had plans to come next fall, the plans for a book fair, the plans fell through. And I literally called the girl and was like, I could come next week on my way back from Australia to Boston. Can everybody make it? And they just said yes. So, and some of the people were from Cape Town. It was actually in Pretoria. And so these 50 people just converged. This was last yeah, night yeah. in Pretoria. And since I was going to be here anyway, yeah. I didn't want to just come in for a night and leave. I've never been in South Africa. Yeah. I've heard so much about it. I have so many fans down here. Yeah. So I decided to take five days. Okay. I, t I tweeted for friends. <laughs> because of Twitter, I met Gerald, who gave me a walking tour yesterday. I've been running into people. This place right around Maboneng has just been amazing. I've been walking around, seeing the graffiti seeing the buildings, just like seeing the revitalization is amazing. And everyone just seems so excited. And, you know, it, it really is like you, you feel like you've just landed in a city that's in the middle of an explosion of yeah, growth. Yeah. And I've been loving it. It's really incredible to me because I travel all over the world. I mean, I tour constantly. I was just in Australia. I'll be in the UK and Europe this spring. I travel the States constantly. And most of what you see with cities, unlike Johannesburg, is like things, things are sort of uh, decreasing energetically. Everything's getting too expensive for everybody. Everyone's moving out. Everyone's kind of down on the city. Everyone's kind of down on New York. Everyone's kind of down on London. And you come here and it's like, People are moving to the inner city, like lofts are being built, like everything feels like, it, it's like this moment of excitement instead of this moment of like, oh, you should have been here in the 80s, like, <laughs> which is what you get yes. in, in most metropolitan areas in the States and in Europe. So, I mean, I never would have come here if the fans hadn't made it happen. Yeah. And that's the beautiful thing about the internet too, is that like, it's people power. Yeah. And it wasn't a rich promoter, it wasn't a club, it wasn't a theater, it wasn't a label. It was a bunch of people yes. being like, we know your music, we love your music, we're gonna get you here. Yeah. Here's the money for the ticket, yeah. come on over. Yeah. And the internet really is making that possible and it will, it's, the, it's one of the things that will make a city like this, like a real international art city, is, you know, the, just the energy of the people sucking in, yeah. um, sucking in the art. It means an incredible lot for uh, artists with one million Twitter followers to come and stay in town. She's staying at the 12 Decades Hotel in Mabining. She's been walking the city. She's been, done the Joba Places walking tour of me as well. And tonight she's performing in the city. And she really is, she has embraced uh, the culture and the vibrancy and the uh, change and regeneration of the city. And I'm really excited to have someone of that caliber sharing it with us. is a city of enormous challenges so we see enormous exciting change at the same time I mean one of the biggest opportunities and challenges is the fact that Johannesburg's people are so young and the average age is somewhere in the mid-20s it gives a vibe it brings a lot of creativity but also means we need to create opportunities for people in the city we've seen great initiatives by both the private sector and the public sector the city council and the province in redeveloping precincts dealing with public space fixing our buildings but we do still need more efficient urban management we do need a city and you know local government that takes care of the little things the manual covers are missing that you can fall in new projects need to be maintained at a top quality all the time there shouldn't be even one week in when the weeds are growing on the sidewalks Joburg is infinitely better than it's been five years ago 10 years ago and 20 years ago but it certainly hasn't reached its potential yet 
So if you ask me where Thailand is going to be in five years, um, I believe we are just at the beginning of the curve up. And I believe that as we also need to move to a more sustainable life of higher density living, and as the suburbs are being clogged with traffic, people are going to be discovering the freedom of actually living in town, walking the streets, having a coffee, walking to work rather than driving. And that probably gives Johannesburg a great future.